Let's talk about sequencing the swing. This is the video I've done for the more elite player. I'm going to go a little bit more de in depth with the information, but please stay with the video and I think you'll pick up a lot of really good tips. Connection without doubt is the biggest key to the golf swing in my opinion. But let me talk you through the different aspects of what makes a really good golf swing. If we start with the backswing, many coaches will have you believe that the backswing really doesn't matter. It's all about the impact position. But to me, that's like going to the gym without warming up. Yes, some people can go and do that without the fear of pulling a muscle or getting an injury. However, to most of us, they're the exception, not the rule. For the rest of us, if we don't warm up properly, we risk the chance of injury or something bad happening, very much like producing a poor backswing. There will always be exceptions to the rule. But here's an interesting statistic. Only three out of the 43 winners on the 2009 PGA Tour had what would be considered to be an orthodox backswings. Those three players were Kenny Perry, Matt Kuchar and Ryan Moore. Obviously great players to win out on the tour, but definitely got some pretty unusual moves going on on their backswing. Now I'm not saying that unorthodox backswings can't work, because quite clearly they do. But what I'm saying is I want to show you the best way to make a backswing. I want to show you a way to swing the club back like a Tiger Woods or a Michelle Wee or Anthony Kim or maybe Rory McIlroy. The golf swing will always be a chain reaction, so it's better to start that chain with a simple, efficient move. If you do that, it's going to lead to much more consistent results. Sequencing is all important in the golf swing. I want you to learn to start the swing with your left shoulder, not your hands and arms. If your left shoulder drives your golf swing on the bat swing, it's so much easier to keep that swing on plane and get in good positions. From this angle, if we allow the left shoulder to turn the club very smoothly back, it allows the club shaft to get on plane very easily. If we start to take the club away just either with our hands and arms, we can bring the club very easily inside and get the club across the line at the top. Or alternatively, we can become, we can start to swing the club outside and lay the club off at the top of the swing. Two things we don't want to do. So make sure that left shoulder drives the club back and you'll find it much easier to keep that club on plane. At the start of the video, I talked about connection being my favorite thing in the golf swing. If you stay connected on your backswing, it makes it very easy to turn the upper half of the body against the lower half. We don't get independent movements happening. If you can do this, you too can go ahead and swing the club to the top of the swing as good as someone like Adam Scott, Charles Schwartzel or Michelle Wee. If we create the right angles in our address position, there's no longer now the necessity to swing the club so long to try and create extra power. If we've got a power setup position, it enables us, even with a nine iron, to swing back only three quarter length and drive from here. Even with a driver, you should be trying to keep the swing short as parallel. I like players to try and get the club into a three quarter length position. That's adequate enough to turn the shoulders far enough back to create the power and then really release down onto that ball and mash it. The reason I talk so much about connection is by being connected from a good position, it enables us to get the club in a very orthodox position at the top of the swing and not rely as so many players do on timing. Timing is something that comes and goes and cannot be relied on day in, day out, especially in pressurized situations. This is why we need to work hard on making sure that we sequence the swing in a good way. Once we've got that awesome setup position, we're going to go ahead and keep that left shoulder turning. The more we can keep this left shoulder turning, the easier it's going to be to get that club into a good position at the top of the swing. The downswing starts from the ground up. Now if you've turned correctly, the legs and hips should be coiled, ready to unleash. So looking from face on, what we're looking for, and especially elite amateurs and professionals, should get the feeling that the hips start to uncoil and then there's a lateral movement of the hips towards the target. The inside of the right leg then drives towards the ball, which creates this space to allow our hands and arms to drop naturally, keeping them beautifully on plane. So as we start to come down, there's a lateral shift and rotation with the hips. This is what creates the torque and eventually the power. It also creates 
the opportunity for the swing path to slightly shallow, allowing it to be on the most orthodox path into the ball. As you power through the ball, I want you to really maintain your height. Let the club extend down the line towards your target whilst you're still turning. It's often overlooked that as we come down into impact, the left arm and club shaft being in a direct line will really help you to control the flight, control the, control the distance, and also it'll have a real great impact on the accuracy. So we're trying to square not only the club face, but we can see this left arm and this club are in a direct straight line. Remember, the real key way to create torque in our swing is to get the right turn on the way back and then deliver the power at the latest possible moment. I talk to a lot of players about lastminute.com power. That means that we can uncoil in exactly the right way and deliver the power at the precise moment. So as we come into impact, we've extended that club down our line. We keep turning as we do this. Now you can see my right heel has come off the ground. Now this will really depend on which club you're using and how hard you're hitting the ball. If I was trying to hit a soft 9-iron, I would find that my right heel would almost stay on the ground until after impact. Whereas if I'm trying to hit a hard 9-iron, say from heavy rough, I'm really going to find my legs driving hard and you would find that the heel is going to be off the ground when we come into impact. The same would be said for a driver. So as we've driven through, kept turning, I want you to still maintain the connection here. It's not the time to let the arms come this way. We want to maintain the connection, keep turning through into a really balanced follow-through position there. You want to find that you can hold that position and it should be nice and relaxed down the back. You should have no tension in your body. Also, resist the urge, if we turn face on that way, resist the urge to allow the arms to go too much that way. We want to keep this angle moving more in here. Don't let that happen. A key factor to look at as we come through from that position there and back down is this butt of the club. We start to match the butt of the club up on the downswing. We'll start to return here and it stays with us right the way through. You can see this is what I'm talking about, great connection. We're not breaking out too much here. See where the butt of the club is pointing. The butt of the club is gonna match up to my mid drift here and I'm gonna hold that position until it breaks above my belt there. So it's still pointing here when it's at my belt line but as it comes out, obviously it breaks out of position there. I want you to really work hard on ending your swing in the correct way. I'm still amazed in 2010 that so many top professionals out on the tour end their swing in an unbalanced position, especially on the weeks when they're not near the top of the leaderboard. Don't be like them all the time, especially when we're practicing. Let's be disciplined in our golf swing. We want to go ahead, once we've hit the shot, hold that balanced position. Hold that position there until the ball stops moving or for a count of five, whichever's the longest. Let me go ahead and hit one and I'll show you what I mean. Hold that position there. Really good balanced position. Very strong and athletic looking there. Now I can hold that position for 30 seconds if I want. You can hear there's not too much strain in my voice. We're trying to be very relaxed just here. Even if you're not able to hold your swing in position every single time, it's still going to be beneficial when you get out onto the golf course. Sometimes you might find that you get to that position and you have to fall out of it, but still you'll be in a balanced position around here. Work really hard on these things because believe me, discipline is what's going to make the difference between you improving really quickly or taking two or three years to get better. I want you to watch the following clip of Lee Westwood and watch how he goes through his routine and holds his finish after he's hit the shot. I've given you some of the secrets there to how I want you to swing the golf club. It's up to you now to go through them step by step and start to introduce them into your game.